Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to complete the uh, information or the explanation of my historic identity by comparing it with the new calculus. So the original idea for the geometric theorem that fixes the flawed mainstream formulation was inspired by the new calculus. Um, however, the new calculus doesn't suffer from an extraneous term, such as you see here in the identity. There, this, this term in the new calculus uh, is always zero, whereas in the historic identity it cannot be zero, unless f, of course, is a straight line. That's the only exception. So, who actually solved the tangent line problem. Was it Newton? Was it Leibniz? Was it Cauchy? Was it somebody who came after them? Actually, it was none of them. It was I, John Gabriel, who solved the tangent line problem rigorously. Neither Newton nor Leibniz nor anyone else understood the geometric identity and had no clue that uh, there is no need for limit theory or infinity or infinitesimals in the formulation of calculus. This one identity, which is inspired by the new calculus, it's not the new calculus, otherwise I wouldn't be comparing it later on to the new calculus, um, actually fixes the mainstream formulation because both the derivative and the definite integral can be formulated in terms of this very same definition. So what the identity says in words is that um, the slope of a non-parallel secant line is equal to the sum of the slopes of a tangent line and the difference between the slopes of the tangent line and the non-parallel secant line. So all this is explained in these two articles, which I've placed uh, links to in the detail section. Moreover, I will give you access to these folders in my drive, the applets, articles, and LinkedIn articles. So. You, you can actually just ask for permission to access those and you'll be able to find all the other links inside those folders. Okay, and there's a lot more there than just what, you, what I'm telling you here. So Q of XH is an expression in either uh, H and or X and it denotes the difference in the, the, the secant line slope and the tangent line slope. So from the identity, we can actually define the derivative and we can write it down like this. And it's exactly equal to this expression on the right hand side. There's no need to take limits or any other of that nonsense. And it works for every single smooth function. OK, there's no function that it does not work for. Now, the example I'm showing you is going to be uh, quite a difficult function. It's a logarithmic function. So you can download the applet and try it with many other functions. Now, the general derivative f prime of x happens to be f prime of c, where c actually lies between x and x plus h. So even though this identity is true, it's hard to write it down as elegantly and beautifully as one can in the new calculus. So for example, here, what you have is f prime of c equal to the integral divided by h. Okay, in other words, this here is the arithmetic mean of all the y-ordinates in the interval x, x plus h. Now, if we knew f prime of c, we could simply define the definite integral as f prime of c times h. However, since this is not the case, we have the new definite integral definition in terms of this geometric identity. And you can see it right in front of you here. It's called di. Now, I'll explain what these mean in a second. Had anyone before me succeeded to well-define the derivative, you may have been looking instead at this rather than, than this, okay? And of course, this is more similar to what finds, one finds in the new calculus, which, by the way, what you see in front of you is the entire new, calcula, new calculus summarized in three statements, okay? That's all it's about. There's no infinity there. There's no limits. There's no nonsense. So... But what does di mean in terms of geometry? So this part represents exactly the rectangular areas in each partition x plus hi. So if we go to the applet and, and we look at the applet and we show the areas, so 
this this uh, part here, f prime of x plus uh, h i over n, is the rectangular areas. Now, in this case here, there is no rectangular area in the first one because uh, we're using the log of 1, which is 0. So that's expected. But you can calculate this, and you can see that it works. And you'll see also that um, when you sum up the green areas and the orange areas, the, the total sum will be 185, I mean 1.885, which is the total area under the curve. Okay, So for each interval, you'll have an orange and a green area. The, the green area may be uh, null. Uh, I must inform you that the green areas are always rectangular areas, whereas the orange areas are irregular areas that complete the area for that particular re rectangle. Okay? So, and I remember, as I've showed you in past videos, increasing the uh, partitions will simply bring the green areas closer to the actual value of the integral. Okay, so uh, so if we do that and we refresh, now you see that's much closer to the value of the integral. All right, but it doesn't matter. I mean, any n will still provide, as you see, this figure doesn't change. Will still provide the same value uh, for the total area. So no limits, no infinity garbage, none of that nonsense. You don't have to spend six months learning how to use limits. Now, or probably the rest of your life, because most uh, real analysis professors I've met don't actually understand limits or even how to teach them. So in any case, that area represents the rectangular. That This summation represents the rectangular areas or the green areas that you saw in this, uh, in this applet. And this represents the remaining areas in orange in the applet. So the sum of these together uh, is the exact area. Let's see an example. So if we have uh, this function here, log of x, then of course it's primitive. If its primitive is a function x log n, the natural logarithm, by the way, it's log x to the base e minus x. So we want the area from 1 to 4, and so h in this case is 3. And if we choose three partitions, then n is three. So this is this shows you how we can actually calculate the area. So the, the green areas are given by these uh, derivatives, okay? And the total in this case is 1.79176, okay? And so if we refresh this, um, so now what are we doing here? Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, so, Oh, oh, there's just one mistake here. This is 3.5. Let's make it 4. And now, refresh, and now it's correct. Okay, so I said from 1 to 4, not from 1 to 3.5. So you always have to click refresh sums on the applet to get the right area. Okay, so that's 1.79176, and the remaining area is 0.75342, and that's also correct, okay? 0.75342. And so the total area is the sum, which is 2.54518, and that also agrees with this value here, right? So now we can find the area in each partition by adding the corresponding partition areas. So for example, if we wanted just this area this, this, in this partition here between 2 and 3, then we'd simply add those corresponding areas. So 0 0.6935 plus this gives us 0. 90955 and we can verify that that's true by simply going putting the begin there and that there and refreshing the sums and there we go 0.91 that's pretty close uh, in fact I could uh, expand this by saying five decimal places 0.90954 90955 pretty close in the new calculus the expression uh, Q of X, M, N is always zero and so can be ignored. Now, you have just seen how dreadfully complicated it can be using the identity which fixes your flawed mainstream formulation of calculus. In the new calculus, this process is far simpler. So what we have in the new calculus is this summation here on the left-hand side. This is the definition of the definite integral in the new calculus. Do you see any limits there? Do you see infinity? It doesn't matter what the value of k is. It can be a, a value from 1 to as large as you like, and the answer will always be the same. And of course, f prime of mu sub s is given by this expression here. So you don't have to actually know mu sub s. Moreover, m plus n is equal to the 
uh, interval width because uh, in the new calculus, a derivative is not defined the same way it's defined rigorously, not as you find in the bogus mainstream formulation, where m and n are horizontal distances from the point of tangency. So you do not need to know c, and the same problem above is solved as follows. It's given by this expression, and uh, we can expand that expression. And I, you, have a, you have a link to this article, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but you can expand it, and you can see that you'll get exactly the same answer. Uh, the final answer is given because the sums uh, cancel out. In other words, the uh, entire expression telescopes, leaving only the difference of two terms. Okay. So the new calculus derivative is defined in terms of the mean value theorem. Okay, in other words, you can get the fundamental theorem of calculus in one step from the uh, mean value theorem of calculus. And uh, that's pretty obvious when you look at uh, this expression here, where you simply take f prime of c, in other words, c lies between the two, and you don't even need to know c, and just multiply it by the interval width, because the definite integral is a product of two arithmetic means, okay? So no garbage like Riemann sums and upper and lower uh, sums uh, and all the other, excuse my language, bullshit that you find in mainstream uh, academia. Very well then, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little presentation. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.